Hi, it's Jonathan, the creator of Core Walking, and I have a new program out on sciatica, and I wanted to share some driving tips for sciatica and piriformis syndrome. The sciatic nerve is the longest nerve in the body. It comes down through the lower spine, travels all the way down to the foot. So if you're sitting in a car, it is pretty easy for it to be impacted. So I'm gonna give you some tips for support that people can find while driving. Starting with the feet. The cars are designed really specifically. They're not designed well. We're not really meant to sit in car seats. They're not ergonomically designed for us as well as they could be, but that's neither here nor there. Let's use what we've got. When you look down at your left foot, this is, I'm talking about uh, cars in the United States, and I'm usually referring to men, to automatic transmissions. There is a pedal for your left foot, and you wanna use that pedal. You wanna extend your left foot onto that pedal. It's not, the leg's not gonna be straight. It has a semi, a small bend in it, but when the foot is on that pedal, it's really good for your hip and pelvis. You don't wanna bend the knee and put the foot flat on the floor. Some people will fold that left foot under the right thigh. You really don't wanna do that. You wanna keep the left foot on that pedal and that is good for balance in your pelvis. When we move over to the right foot on the gas pedal, it's really key to keep the right foot parallel. If you're not in pain, it doesn't matter. But if you have your right heel directly below the gas pedal and lift it up and place it on the brake and lift it up and place it back on the gas pedal, you are uh, keeping balance again in the pelvis and you're not activating the piriformis muscle, which turns the foot in and out. And by keeping it in neutral, you are much less likely to, likely to suffer pain and you will have that balance between the left and right foot, keeping them both relatively parallel. So that's an essential key to the for the right foot. Moving up to the lower spine, which is where the sciatic nerve emanates from, we need to keep the lower spine in a good position. And it is really easy to flatten the back or tuck the pelvis into the bottom of the chair, car seat, and we want to avoid that. Sometimes you could do it by having a, a thing, you know, there's nothing wrong with buying something that pushes your lumbar spine forward. Many cars actually have a support on the side of the chair. You just turn it on and it, it'll keep that lumbar curve in. That's a fine thing, but you have to be aware of it. And I actually think it's better to do it naturally than with the help of something, but help is great. When we come up to the hands, classically, Driving was taught at 10 and 2 for probably 50 or 60 years. Uh, you keep your hands at 10 and 2. That's what you would learn in driver's ed. And then when you leave driver's ed, you keep one hand on the wheel, top or bottom, one arm out the window. We don't want that. We do want to use two hands, but now we are taught to keep the hands at 9 and 3 with the thumb straight up on the steering wheel to protect against the airbag breaking our thumb. Nine and three is actually best for posture and for sciatica as well. When both hands are on the steering wheel, both sides of your pelvis are equidistant, and that is going to provide the best flow for the sciatic nerve. All right, one more tip. I have many, many driving tips for sciatica. What do you do with your head when you're driving? It's really a bummer. If you just stop at any red light and look to the side, you're gonna see the person next to you with their head is just gonna be forward. I promise you, we really don't want that. You might not think your head is affecting your sciatic nerve, but it is because the head going forward pulls the lower spine back, creating an environment for the sciatic nerve to be unhappy. Put your head on the headrest, try to keep your eyes level. As you can see, my approach is to teach. I think if you know what sciatica is, what piriformis syndrome is, what the piriformis muscle is, you're much more likely to get out of pain. So I teach anatomy and all about the sciatic nerve in addition to teaching posture and walking and how you sit to get out of sciatic pain. It's not all that difficult if you become the driver of your healing and you use your own knowledge, your own understanding and your own awareness to start the process of getting out of pain. Again, I promise it's not that hard. So maybe check out my website and my new program on sciatica, the Sciatica Pain Relief Program. 
Thanks so much for listening. I hope these tips help you and have a great day.